we began doing these plays in this bar, art gallery in Alphabet City, and we quickly developed a kind of a cult following uh, down there, and we wanted to move it to a real theater, you know, so we'd actually have a bathroom backstage and a dressing room. So uh, when we tried, first tried to get producers to move it, nobody saw any possibility of it. Then Ken Elliott, who was my roommate and who directed the play, was also in it and producing it as, as such. And East Village thought, well, we'll just produce it ourselves. And, and he came up with this crazy budget of only $55,000, which was insane even in 1985, Broadway. But that, that seemed like a lot of money to us. But we, you know, we got it together through friends and family and just, you know, Many people made up it, about 150 investors for $55,000. And so we opened up the Provincetown Playhouse on McDougal Street. And it, 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 we got this rave review in the New York Times. And it became a big hit and ran for five years and, and gave us careers. Incredible. Yeah. I think what's so funny, too, is something you and I have in common is it was lovely to see that you helped support Mildred Pierce by yeah. Mr. Ryan Landry. I think. So He's a good friend of mine. And I used to be a gold dust orphan. Really? Yes. Did you live in Boston? I did. I was in Cleopatra with Ryan. Oh. Um, and we did it both in Boston at Machine and then in um, Provincetown as well. So, you know, I gave to the fun helping. I you know, Ryan's work. I love Ryan and I love his work. I think he's a genius. And, you know, I know that you were very philanthropic and also supportive. I'm sure more, much more than I did, but, you know, he ended up here. It's great to see. Yes, I think he's going to do another one, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really kind of a new friend of mine just uh, over the last two years. I, I started performing in cabaret again after many years. And uh, I was at, done my cabaret show in Provincetown. And I'd always heard about Ryan Landry and felt that we were kind of in the same line. And was always so, so, so intrigued by hearing about him. And then it, it, it was kind of an unfortunate thing that each time that I would be in Provincetown to do my act, was the couple nights of the week that he wasn't performing. So I never actually got to see him, but we became friends. So I, I was thrilled when he did Mildred Pierce in New York, and actually got to see one of his shows, and I just, just loved it. I'm just crazy about him. I, I think it's just fascinating the way he's created this kind of empire in Provincetown and Boston, and uh, and he's done so many shows. I mean, he's, our lives are slightly parallel, and yet, He's, he's a real entrepreneur. You know, I, so I wish I had a little bit more, a little, a little more like him. I think there's a lot of parallels there in your story about the switch to Provincetown Playhouse. Uh, and yeah. you know, I think uh, it's just incredible to think of how you grew from there into you know these now iconic plays and films like Psycho Beach Party and uh, obviously Die Mari Die my favorite of all your your works. And a work of the past. I'm, I'm really as much a, a student of, of theater history as I am film history. And, and, and it is interesting how, how today, in a way, where when everything is so available through the internet, and you, uh, the, you know, it, it fascinates me that so few people are, are that interested, you know, yeah. because it's, it's so, I mean, we would have worked really hard. And, and maybe there's, maybe that's part of it, you know, maybe when you do have to work a little harder, you, you, or you become more obsessed, yeah. you know, I don't know. It, it, it just, um, when I was a kid and, and uh, would, first of all, you know, there was no home video, so the only time you'd see a certain movie is, if, you know, once a year if they would actually show it on, you know, on TV. So you, you know, you, it wasn't just at your, you know, beck and call. And the Wizard of Oz was a big event when it was on once a year. You know, uh, but now for the past twenty years or so, people just grow up ha having it on their on their shelf. Yeah, DVD, so, it, Ray, so it doesn't quite. I don't think it quite has that much significance if you're in the theater. And I'd be sort of intrigued by that photo. Then I would go to the Library of Performing Arts after school and I would, you know, go to their research room and find these big scrapbooks of, of 
their whole career, and I would just pour, my, pour into it. And then sometimes that would lead me, I'd see a picture in, in that scrapbook of another actress, and then I'd want to find out more about her. Yeah. But today it would be so great, you know, I could just, uh, I don't have to schlep over to the Library of Performing Arts, just Google Evil Galleon and find everything I want to know. I mean, it's, that's a great thing. So I, I'm, I am a little surprised, particularly people who are in a field when they're not that interested. Mm -hmm. It would just, it seemed to me when I wanted to be in theater that I wanted to know everything. I couldn't understand a word she said. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of incredible. But, you know, so she just fascinated me uh, so much. And, you know, I posted over right here. Uh, you know, I just wanted to know everything about these these people. Right. So the voice. There's Charles Bush, the man, right? And there's this incredible voice that nobody ever can seem to replicate. I want I'm, I want a training in the voice. So the, oh, even my, my vocal mannerism? You know, the mannerism of, you know, that sort of, uh, oh, well, Angela I, Arden, you know. Well, I, I think incredible. sometimes you wonder, you know, you know, how did that even come up with that? I, I think, actually, well, well, you know, the, the, you know, I play a lot of different characters, but I guess, you know, there's some similarities in them. <laughs> and uh, I suppose the, the sort of grand dame actress voice I use is, well, there's just little bits of, of so many different other ladies that, float in and out, you know, I sometimes use a little bit of the rapid, rapid pacing of and clarity of, of Rosalind Russell's voice, but she was such a skilled technician that I, I, I don't have the vocal dexterity of her, but I've used some of that voice. Really, I'm, I'm, I mean, almost everyone, I, I you know, Hal House does that strain, sort so, so, so of, uh, uh, elongated vowel sounds, and uh, you know, like the sort of fry, sort of, sort, of, sort of thing, and going up to the end of the sentence, and always hitting the last word, the last syllable of every, you know, every sentence. You know, so I mean, it, that that's contempt. That's a contemporary thing. In you know, the past, it, people spoke differently. They're, you know, just I say we bring it back. You know, it's like, their fashions. You know, I'm not saying one's better than the other, but just it's so yeah. So. Uh, we should bring it all back, sort of. Uh, but uh, go give me a good one. Shot but I think uh, I think my that what you might be referring to is sometimes I, I, I do the sort sort of uh, sort of thing there, and and, yeah. and I think that was actually kind of a taking something from Joan Crawford that she did that I was so exaggerated that she doesn't really do that. But like there's a woman at her exit in the movie The Women. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Cause I, I'm really terrible at, at quoting. From old movies, I, I, I think that's why I write my own. Not in trivia artist though. <laughs> yeah, well, that character actually, yeah. But I, I, I don't, I, I, I couldn't tell you that I paraphrase everything. Uh, but she says she has some eggs in line, like she says, well, I, I, I guess it's back to the perfume counter for me, and and, and I think I've kind of exaggerated that sort 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 of thing, and so you know, so it's. Been a little, uh, little bit of a trademark of mine, I guess. My favorite line, the uh, vermouth into the glass of gin, from good time when we die, of course. I feel like that's been quoted now so many times. Well, I mean, since, yeah, I think I just, you know, rather, you know, a lot of people just it really um, enjoy just quoting from movie dialogue. But I, as I said, I, I've never really been able to do that. <laughs> but I, I always enjoy just making up my own movie ish dialogue. Character. Yeah. So I was always doing that. It's so great to speak with you, Charles. I okay. really appreciate your time. Yes, I'm for the fans out there. there, I hope that they will go and see a, the tribute artist playing at primary stages through March 19th. Yeah. Well, I think it'll probably be March 30th. March 30th. Yeah. Uh, so for more information, go to primarystages.org. And to learn more about Charles, I would recommend the documentary The Lady in Question is Charles Bush. So I'm Steve Schoenberg. From Movie Dialogue. But I, as I said, I, I've never really been able to do that. But uh, I, I always enjoy just making up my own movie-ish dialogue. Character. Yeah. That's so good. I was always doing that. It's so great to speak with you, Charles. I okay. really appreciate your time. Yes, I'm For the fans you know. out there, I hope that they will go and see a, the tribute artist playing at primary stages through March 19th. Yeah. Well, I think it'll probably be March 30th. March 30th. Yeah. Uh, so for more information, go to primarystages.org. And to learn more about Charles, I would recommend the documentary 
the lady in question is Charles Bush. So I'm Steve Schoenberg for Center on the Iron. Thanks, Charles. Oh, yeah, you're great. I'm so much yeah, I could talk to you for hours. I really could, but I don't want to. I know you're busy and you probably get tired. You don't mind if I'm not going to go. I'm sure you're beat from. Uh, I sure am, man. I'm, I'm really been so tired. It really um, enjoy just quoting from movie dialogue, but I, as I said, I, I've never really been able to do that. But uh, I, I always enjoy just making up my own movie-ish dialogue. Character. Yeah, That's so great. I was always doing that. It's so great to speak with you, Charles. I okay. really appreciate your time. Yes, I'm for the fans you. out there. I hope that they will go and see a, the tribute artist playing at primary stages through March 19th. Yeah. Well, I think it'll probably be March 30th. March 30th. Yeah. Uh, so for more information, go to primarystages.org. And to learn more about Charles, I would recommend the documentary, The Lady in Question is Charles Bush. So I'm Steve Schoenberg for Center on the Iron. Thanks, Charles. Oh, yeah, you're great. I'm so much yeah, I could talk to you for hours. I really could, but I don't want to. I know you're busy and you probably get tired. You don't mind if I'm not going to go. I'm sure you're. Beat from. Uh, I sure am, man. I've really been so tired. Mm -hmm. March 30th. March 30th. Yeah. Uh, so, for more information, go to primarystages.org. And to learn more about Charles, I would recommend the documentary The Lady in Question is Charles Bush. So, I'm Steve Schoenberg for Center on the Iron. Thanks, Charles. Oh, yeah, you're great. I'm so much. Yeah, I could talk to you for hours. I really could, but I don't want to. I know you're busy and you probably get tired. You don't mind if I'm not going to go. I'm sure you're beat from. Uh, I sure am, man. I've really been so tired.